All right, so what we have for this lab is we've got an integral process set up here. You can see we've got a pump pumping off the bottom. Uh, we're gonna be working with this. We have this connected to a live process here. Um, so if I'll just back out here, you can see, here's our uh, Delta V workstation. And this computer down here, there's a blue cable coming out the back. You can see that blue ethernet cable there, uh, right up here, blue ethernet cable. It comes up and it connects into our Delta V trainer right here. So uh, this is very similar to, to a PLC. It's got a power supply, uh, a controller, a processor, and then analog input, analog output, uh, discrete input, discrete output. And then this is a field bus, which is a communication protocol. Um, but we're using this hardware to bring in signaling from our, our uh, yeah, we'll have a flow trans, two flow transmitters, a level transmitter to measure the level, and then we have a signal going out to our control valve right here. So we have uh, four, four pairs of wires going out here. Uh, and the way that this is all set up here, uh, we've got fuses right here, and they're connected in series. So if we just look at our first loop here, first analog input signal, um, it, uh, it's connected, oh sorry, let's look at uh, this one right here. Yes, this would be the, uh, where does this one go? Let's just make sure, we, lots of wires here. Yes, so these here, these two, uh, it comes out here. This is, this is a powered or a sourced uh, analog input. So power comes out, flows over to our fuse. And then from our fuse, it goes up over here. So from fuse up to here. And then this flows out over to our little marshalling area that we have down here. You can see. So this was that, that same wire. It demirrored over here. We have all of our, uh, everything labeled as four. This is station four, so four dash one, two, three. And if we go back up over here, we see that, that same four dash one. So on the top one in, in uh, column four dash one here, and that connection point is then right down here as well. So then this flows out on our twisted pair cabling right here. Twisted pair cabling over, we'll just follow this to our level transmitter and it comes in here on the positive of our level transmitter. And then the negative goes back on the black wire, which then completes our loop back here on 4-2. It flows directly back over to the black lead here on card one and card one's our analog input. So we've got a four to 20 milliamp signal coming from that transmitter to give us our level here in the vessel, you can see it's about 50% here, and it's about halfway up our vessel over there on our trainer. So we've got, like I said, four devices here connected on our trainer. If we just kind of have a peek over here now in our trainer, here's our control valve. We have one flow meter here, one flow meter here, and then our level transmitter. So all these devices are connected. So we'll kind of go through how the process flows here. Um, and it doesn't quite look the same as it does on our HMI screen over there. But the first thing that we have here, this isn't shown on our HMI, but we have a pump here that's sucking fluid from our tank right here, from our vessel. It's sucking fluid, discharging it up this line right here. Just follow this line up, it goes through this flow meter. And then it loops down and around and back through our valve. The valve is shown on the HMI and the flow meter, but the pump is not. So then the valve discharges this into the top of our vessel, and that will increase our level if we open the valve more. Then flowing off the bottom of our tank, you can see there's a line here going off the bottom, and this line flows off the bottom down here, goes down into our pump, our second pump. This is the pump on the bottom of the tank. If I just take you around here, and this is what makes it an integrating process, this here is the suction coming into our pump here. So we have this valve right here open and it's gonna flow in and up through the pump. This valve here is shut. If we wanted to pull off the tank, we could, but we shut that. This is gonna pull off the bottom of our vessel over there that we're trying to control level in. This discharges out along this line right here and flows over to our bottom flow meter, which is right down here, a turbine flow meter. 
and this is the flow totalizer here that we're connected to get flow rate back to our, our control system, delta V. And then it discharges out, there's a valve here that we can use to set the flow rate off the bottom of the tank, so because that's gonna be fixed. And then, then, and then that now flows down and back over into where we started here, into our vessel, and it's just a continuous loop. So that's our integrating process. What we wanna do first is we wanna figure out, we're gonna calculate and prove that integral action time constant that we can calculate that. So there's a few things that we need to know. I'll take you back over to our workstation over here where I have uh, the calculation for determining integral action time constant right here from our presentation in class. So the time constant, the integral action time constant right here is determined if we know the area, cross-sectional area of our cylindrical tank, it's vertical, needs to be vertical. Uh, if we know that cross-sectional area and we know the full scale, the full scale out, which is gonna be our level, our, our, it's gonna be a height value, divided by our full scale in, which is gonna be the flow into our vessel. So we need to figure out these three variables. Once we have those three variables, we should be able to figure out what our integral action time constant is for that process. So let's go and figure out those three variables. So for the first variable that we're gonna figure out here, we're gonna measure the diameter, the diameter of our inside, diameter of our vessel here and just bear with me here it should be pretty close to yes if you look there it's approximately uh, let me go over here Try to do an inside diameter measurement It'd be nice if we had a, maybe a different tool for this job but it's pretty well 14 centimeters we're right around yeah, there you can see 14 centimeters on the bottom there. And so we would need to make sure that our units are all in the same uh, length dimension or length measurement. So 14 centimeters, if we we're using meters, we need to divide by 100. All right now for the full scale output measurement, which is our height of the tank, it's measured with this differential pressure transmitter here. Uh, you can see the high side is connected through this blue line over to the near the bottom of our tank right here. Um, and I've confirmed that it reads um, at about six, at about six centimeters in our tank is where it reads four milliamps. And then 48 centimeters above that, so around 54 centimeters, which is right up here. So near the top of the tank, uh, 54 centimeters. So the total, the full scale range value for this is uh, since it's elevated like that, we take the difference between the two and the full scale range value is 48. It's gonna be 48 centimeters. So that's what we'll have, or 0.48 meters. All right, so I'm gonna grab the full scale input value. It's gonna be this flow rate right here. I've opened our valve all the way. You can see it's at 100% open right now. If we just go over here, the valve is 100% open. So what we wanna do is we wanna figure out what our full flow rate would be when the valve is 100% open. Because that's, kind of, that's our input signal to the process, is the uh, signal out to the valve with it opening and closing. So the full scale flow rate is what we want to figure out here. So what I'll do is, since we're right here, is I'll just flip on the pump and we'll grab the number here in liters per minute off this flow totalizer. Flip that on. And you can see it gets up to 20 liters per minute. So we'll take that, 20 liters per minute is our full scale in shut the pump off so we don't overflow and uh, we'll write our values down here. All right, here, so we've recorded all of our values. The inside diameter, make that an ID. The inside diameter of our vessel is 14 centimeters or 0.14 meters. So we need to figure out the cross-sectional area here in meters squared. Our full scale out, which was our level, uh, full scale of our level was 0.48 meters or 48 centimeters. And our full scale in was 20 liters per minute. I'm gonna leave this up to you guys. We need to figure out this in meters cubed per second. If we plug those values all into that equation for the integral action time constant, it'll give us an approximate value or an estimate on what it should be. And then what we'll do next here is we're gonna, is we're gonna confirm that value, confirm our calculation. All right, so uh, I've got our process up and running here. Um, we're flatlined here. This is, our, this is our level, the blue is our process variable. You can see that it's, it's holding steady at 46.8%. Our flow rates almost match. 
This is likely due to a slight error in the flow meters because they're probably almost identical. Uh, but yeah, what we're gonna do here right away is we're gonna step, we're gonna step our controller output signal, this black line on our trend here, and we're gonna see how long it takes for, uh, if we do a 10% step up, we're gonna see how long it takes for our process variable to change that same amount. And we're gonna confirm our integral action time constant here uh, based on our calculations. Uh, so we'll just have a look over at our process quick. You can see I've got the output of the valve. It's at, uh, our valve over here, it's at, uh, it's at 62%. Uh, you can see it right here on our trend, it's flatlined. And if you just have a quick look over here at our, our level in the vessel, it's not moving. Uh, we're measuring that, it's not moving, it's steady. And so what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is I'm gonna go back over here and we're gonna bump this we're gonna bump this by 10% and we're gonna watch. So this here, we're gonna bump this up to 72% and we're gonna wait and, and see how long it takes for this here to get to uh, 48, or sorry, uh, 50, about 57%. So I'll go ahead and make that adjustment here. Uh, change this to 72%. So enter that, bumped it. And now you can see our step, and now you can see it wrapping up like an integral process. And we're waiting for this to get to four, uh, 57. And then once it hits 57, so right there it hit 57. So we want to record that time. Put this back to 62. Um, and record that time from when we first made our first change up to 72% on our controller output and how long and record how long it took for it to uh, go from 47 to 57% on our level over here. And so there, if you look back over here, uh, it's, it's doing a great job of modeling an integral process here. We, we ramped up and then when we went back to where we were, it uh, pretty well flatlined again. All right, so now we've removed this pump here from uh, the process, so now it should act like a first order process. We have the, uh, the drain from the tank right here. It flows down, comes through our flow meter here still, but then it goes directly to, you can see it goes directly to our tank over here. So as the level rises in the tank, as the level rises in our tank over here, the flow out will increase and it should reach a steady state and make it a self-regulating process. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna try and predict what our, our uh, first order time constant is for this vessel. Um, so the first, we'll need our cross-sectional area, which we've already, already have determined. And uh, I'll just take you back over to the computer here. Um, here's our formula for calculating that first order time constant for a first order process. We need to figure out the re this resistance value and we have the cross-sectional area already, uh, density of the water and the acceleration due to gravity. So this one here is the, the one we're gonna uh, make some measurements on to figure out that resistance. See, we can solve for that resistance value if we measure the flow out and uh, we know the density of the, of the fluid, it's water, so 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. Uh, our acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.81. And then if we measure the height of the fluid there, uh, we should be able to figure out, or at least approximate, what that, um, that, uh, that flow resistance value is. All right, so you can see our flow, it's about 3.6 liters per minute. And we're at a height of about 53 centimeters, maybe just shy, 52.8 centimeters. So that means due to the head pressure down here, the flow out is about 3.6. 3.6 and 52, right here, 52, pretty well 53, I'd say 52.8 or 50, yeah, 52.8. Will work. Good. So we've written our values down here. The density of the fluid, which is water, 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. Acceleration due to gravity. Um, the height of the fluid that we got up to is 52.8 centimeters or 0.528 meters. 
and our flow out at that height was 3.6 liters per minute. With that information, we should then be able to figure out our RL value. And with our RL value, we should be able to figure out our time constant because we know the cross-sectional area of the vessel from before and the density and the gravity rate there as well. We should also be able to predict our uh, steady state gain value that we're going to um, get as well because uh, we still do we our, our full scale in value would be the flow in would be that 20 liters per minute and the full scale out would be that point uh, 0.48 meters right so we can plug that all in we should be able to predict these values and then what we'll do is we'll actually step the process and see if we get something close to that all right so we have our first order process or what we expect to be a first order process holding steady at about 2.7%, really low level here. We're just gonna bump it a small amount. We're gonna bump it 2% on the output, because um, this we're expecting probably quite a bit of gain here. Um, it's gonna be similar to a integrating process, but it, we're hoping for it to round off and look something like a first order and reach steady state at a new value. Um, because what we've done is, is we've removed our pump here now. We don't have we don't have uh, the tank flows directly through our flow meter, our flow meter down here, and then down into our tank over there. So uh, you can see both of our flow rates are fairly close. When we do our step here, we should see our inflow rate go up, and then this one come up and try to match it as the as the level rises and the flow out increases. So what I'll go ahead and do is I'll I'll make that step here. We've got. 20 minutes on our trend here, so lots of time to see if it uh, rounds off. So let's uh, go ahead and do that. Right now, our controller output's at 30, 39.8, so right around 40. So what we'll do is we'll go and step that to uh, 42. We'll make a step there. And what we should see is our, our inflow rate rise up, and we can see our our process there is starting to rise here too. So after about 15 minutes or so, we'll check in and see how our process right, made so out. You can see this definitely is shaping up to be a first order process here. You can see we made our 2% change back here. Um, yeah, I believe it was 2%, 2 or 3%. We're up to 42 on the out. And it's now stabilizing here. It hasn't moved. It's right around, it's been right around that 8.8, 8.7 range now. Um, so what I might do now, I, I'll just double check and maybe I'll make a bigger step just so we can maybe get a little bit more of a defined line here to kind of grab our first order time constant out of this. All right, so we're gonna try, still trying to prove or grab that first order time constant off this trend here. Uh, we've got our level really low here, sitting at 4.8%, and we're gonna bump this by 5%. So that means we've gotta go up to 43, 43.4. So uh, we'll just make that change right now. 43.4, gonna bump that. And now we're gonna sit and wait. We've got 20 minutes here to see. Uh, we're gonna watch our our level ramp up. And since it's there's no pump off the bottom of our vessel here, we should see the, the level rise up and push a higher flow out. And it should eventually self-regulate. So. We'll check back in here in about 10 or 15 minutes and see how things are looking. All right, so we're just finishing up uh, about close to 20 minutes on our 5% bump test there. Uh, you can see it definitely is acting like a first order process here. It's just a long, it takes a long time for it to uh, to, to, to reach steady state. Um, so what we'll do is we'll, we'll see if either of these two steps, the 3% step or the 5% step, compared to what we calculated for our time constant for this process.